Hi everybody and welcome back to this week's video. Of course, all the fabulous work from Jet Class. I'm really excited to go through all of your submissions this week and yeah, just celebrating the absolute fabulous work that you've all been submitting. I'm really excited to get started. But of course, we have to start with the word of the week. So this week's word of the week is the word melee. Uh, the word class, it's a noun and Synonyms are confusion, turmoil, and jumble. Definition, what exactly does the word melee mean? Well, it means a large and noisy, uncontrolled crowd in which people are moving in different directions and sometimes fighting with each other. For example, we can use it in a sentence like, we lost sight of each other in the melee. So there you have it. Now, um, here are just some examples. Now, if you look on the right hand corner, just there. It's a picture of the Hundred Years' War, which obviously lasted a hundred years. Um, I believe this is in the 1400s. That's when this particular uh, painting was created. Hundred Years' War between um, England and France. And actually, this word is a French word. It roughly started entering the English language around this time. Um, so yeah, this is. I thought this was a really great image to showcase exactly this uncontrolled crowd. Um, everyone's fighting. Now, of course, I've also heard melee being used to talk about a jumble of different foods. Um, a melee, like a selection of foods. Um, but my housemate said he never heard of that before, so I got a bit confused. So if I'll please ask your parents, have they heard of melee being used in that term? Um, please let me know, um, because I definitely heard it, but he was insistent like he had never heard it before. So I'd like to find out who else has heard that. But it is interesting because obviously words change over time. That's what happens to languages. People start using words in different ways. And this is obviously what happened. So yeah, there you go. That's the word of the week, melee. Okay, so um, I'm just going to move that up slightly. So this piece of work I wanted to start off with was Alice's work. I mean, wow, I couldn't believe it when I saw her collage. It's so, so, so cool. Um, it looks like a feet piece from like a famous artist or something you see in a magazine. And you can tell she's actually cut up lots of different images from magazines um, and sort of created this beautifully designed collage. She's really thought about what we call the composition. I can really tell that Alice has thought about the shapes, about the sizes of all the different pictures. And she's put so much detail into constructing it. Big well done. I love seeing her work come through every week because of this, because every time she submits something, she's put a lot of care and a lot of attention to detail. And this piece almost looks 3D. Um, or, or it sort of looks like a, a distorted world where everything's sort of extra large um, and people are really small and you've got huge biscuits. Um, so you can see it in both different ways, really, or that the biscuit is really, really close up to us as well. And it's almost like 2010 has just come out with a biscuit. It's really great. So, so clever how you've put this together. But as I said before, every single week, Alice's submissions are neat. She puts so much detail into it. And she's really always selects the appropriate vocabulary when we're talking about writing. I'm just going to scroll it down slightly. Um, so if you read her instructions, she's really thought about who is my audience? Who am I writing this for? And because of that, she's made sure that the tone and the choice of language really matches that. And that's what really elevates her work. It really brings it up to that next level. Are you thinking about who is my audience? Alice always thinks who is my audience whenever she's doing her writing. I know lots of others also do that as well. Are you doing it? Because if you are, that is the type of work we're going to be looking for you, certainly in secondary school. So really get that in now. Get that practice in now that you guys are in year six. Alice, beautiful work from this week. As always, thank you so much for your submissions. Now I'm going to be moving on now to Ruby. Now I've filmed this video um, once before, um, but it didn't upload properly. So all the, please apologies, all the um, pictures are sort of not lined up exactly. There we go, that's better. Okay, back to Ruby's work. Can I just say, look at all her submissions. Um, I couldn't fit them all on one page. Ruby, please keep submitting that much in. It's such a joy um, when I see all of your work come through. It's great. Because um, then I can really see how hard you're working. And she's been reading lots this week. She's already on to another new book. And it's called the Sp A Spoonful of Jam. 
Um, and it's from the same author as Goodnight Mr. Tom. It's from Michelle McGorian. So she's actually taken a picture of a blurb for you all to read. So have a quick scan through that and see if that's the sort of book that you'd like to read. I love it. It's such a good book. And um, she's also created a book review on YouTube and she's posted it. Um, it was so, so good. Ruby is fantastic. Um, she was so clear. It was so professional. And I loved listening to your opinion on the book uh, Somerset Tsunami by Emma Carroll. And it, I'd never heard of the book before and it actually inspired me to go and check it out. If you love historical fiction, you'll absolutely love books by Emma Carroll. I'd never heard of her before and I don't know why because I love historical fiction and Ruby's review it was so clear and it was honestly spectacular and it really made me go okay I'm going to look and see who this author is and I'm definitely going to be buying some of her books because they look so good. Now the book that Ruby reviewed was called The Somerset Tsunami and I thought oh, this looks really interesting and I looked at it and went hang on, these people on the front cover, I was using my predicting skills, I went, they don't look like they're in modern day clothing. In fact, what she's wearing on her head sort of makes me think that they're roughly about the 16th century. Um, Sorry, 17th century. Goodness me, how on earth could I get that wrong, Miss Jones? Um, I was thinking, right, I can see this picture up here. I'm using my connection, making links and making connection skills. This looks like Glastonbury Tall. Um, and I was watching a documentary on Glastonbury the other day. I went, hang on, that looks familiar. Ah, Somerset. As we know, we talked about counties, didn't we? We talked about them all the time in class. And Somerset is a county in the West Country. And this was a real event It happened. So the book is set in 1616, but the event happened in 1609. Um, 1616, by the way, was when Shakespeare died. That's why the author chose to set it during that time. Um, and it's basically, I'll read you the like a very short synopsis. So when Fortune Sharp carves a boat from a tree with her beloved brother, Jem, She's only having a bit of fun. But now is not the time for a girl to be drawing attention to herself. Hmm, I wonder why. She's sent away to find work dressed as a boy. Luckily, a rich manor house is hiring. Yet Barrow Hill's inhabitants harbour dangerous secrets of their own. The suspicious owner is hunting for witches. Hmm, there we go. Like I said before, the house, it's, and the house itself is a little too close to the sea. So... This was a real event that actually occurred and it happened um, all of a sudden. It was a nine o'clock in the morning in 1609 and there was a tsunami or something almost like a big flood, a big wave came into the West Country and to the south of Wales. And I'd never heard of this before. It was so interesting. Thank you, Ruby, for your review of this book because otherwise I would never would have heard about it. So I did a little bit of research and it was really quite devastating to the area. Um, and it doesn't really get talked about in the history books. This is actually a contemporary, what we call it was made during that time. It's a print. Um, and you can actually see people trying to flee livestock, which basically means like farm animals. Um, it was absolutely devastating. We don't need to worry about this, by the way, happening in the modern era. It caught them by surprise because they were in 1609. So we don't need to worry. OK. Um, but yes, really interesting um, history there. We can talk about more about that. Um, when we go back to class, because I'd really like to find out some more. Um, and here are just some actors. So obviously they're all people dressed up as people from the early 17th century. There's a thatched roof there. We talked about thatched roofs in class. We talk about a lot of stuff in class, don't we? Have a little chats. Okay, so this is the author, because this um, review of the week is also, I want to talk about lots of books this week. Now, the author She's known, well, somebody called her the queen of historical fiction. And I just thought, well, I just have to see what other books she's written. They look so good. All of them look so good. And I've had a look at some of their blurbs as well at the back. Um, so she's known as somebody from The Telegraph, which is a newspaper. I don't read The Telegraph. I read a newspaper called Guardian. But The Telegraph says this. She's a Hilary Mantel of children's fiction. And I'm reading, uh, Hilary Mantel is a um, adult author. She, she wrote a series, which I'm reading at the moment, called Wool Hall. Really good. And I thought, wow, okay, definitely need to get some of her books into class because they look so good. Ruby, thank you so much for that review because I never would have heard of her otherwise. That's why it's so good to share what we've been doing with each other. Can we just scroll that up? Anyway, back to Ruby's work. I mean, her submissions are self-explanatory. Look at how much writing she's been doing. I expect everybody 
be writing at least a page this week because we've got diary entries. One paragraph isn't enough for diary entries, so you really got to step it up, smash it out, just like Ruby's been doing, making sure that you get the best pieces of work, because I love reading it. And we're going to be bringing our work in, and we can actually have a go at reading out our work when we get back to class, which I thought would be really cool. Ruby, really big well done this week. Moving on to somebody else who's been very, very busy as well. It's Heidi. She's made a cake, and it looks so delicious. Um, and she's also had to go at tie-dye. She's also created a poetry book about the four seasons, as well as her schoolwork. Brilliant. I always say this. It's also the other things you do at home as well. Love to see some of that. So all your baking, Heidi, can I just say, you should be start selling. You should honestly start selling your creations. That cake looks really good. What flavour was it? It looks like a Victoria sponge, but it could also be a lemon cake. Um, please let me know. It looks delicious. Um, and the tie-dye looks really cool as well. Um, so please bring that into school because we'd love to see it. Um, it looks quite, quite messy there, but also quite fun. Okay, moving on now. So Ava, you've had such a fantastic week. Honestly, her submissions have blown me away. Just look th at some of them over here. So her instructions, we're going to talk about that because that really stood out to me. It was neat, concise, that means she hasn't waffled on. She's got exactly what she's needed in a short space of time. Or, or rather, I don't know how writing can be short space of time, but you all know what I mean. And it's fabulously written. I absolutely love the chatty tone to it. Again, she's somebody else who really thinks about her audience. She's always thinking, who am I writing it for? And instantly, I could tell he had a bit of a chatty tone to it, which worked so well. It's like a slightly comical um, instruction piece that we had to do this week. And I want to draw your attention to point four, which is or the word um, of course. It's that phrase of course. And it made it feel really relatable, as if you were having a chat with your friend. And now that's, again, something you should always bear in mind. If you want to appeal to a younger audience... Or if you want to make it casual or informal, having the chatty types of language really works in your favour. So I highly recommend it. And also beautiful artwork. I thought it was inks at first. But what Ava's done, she's actually, I think she's used acrylic or poster paint. I mean, it's, again, really abstract. It could be like a gorgeous exotic flower. Or it could also be a flames, like fire. It's so cool. Love that. Can you please let us know when we get back to class how you made that? Because we could even have a go at doing it, Ava. Um, it looks really complicated. It looks very intricate. But again, I always quite like a challenge when it comes to art. Ava, really big well done. And now speaking of books, Ava is also reading a poetry book by an author or poet called Ogden Nash. He's an American poet. Never heard of him before or didn't know much about him. And thank you because Ava sent me in her picture of her book. I researched him. He looks like such a funny poet. Already, I loved his poetry. He does quite a lot about animals. They're all quite silly, but really well written. Um, I highly recommend you check him out because so, so, so entertaining. Thank you, Ava, for that. Again, somebody else who sent me in a piece of or a book they're reading. I learned something new. I found out something new. So always good to share what you've been doing. Now then, I'm going to move on to Esme's work. Can I just say, I always look forward to seeing her submissions because of how creative and how hardworking she is. You all are, of course. But look at the gorgeous flower that she's made with collage to say thank you to everybody working for the NHS. I hope you're displaying this. Pride of place on your windowsill so that everybody walking past and everybody in the street can see it. It's beautiful. And also, can I just say, cast your eyes across the two kindness cups that she's created and they're really cute and I really love the way they look they're so pleasing to the eye they look like little badges um I really love that um and you've done a really good job of cutting out the middle part that's always quite difficult um and final thing can I just say Esme amazing I gave you 10 dojos or did I give you 20 I can't remember I gave I certainly gave Esme a lot of dojos because she logged on to radioblogging.net and she listened to the Pi Corbett podcast and she told me how much she enjoyed it. That's what I like to see. Again, I recommended something. You had a go at doing it, Esme, and you really enjoyed it. Big well done. And I'm so glad you had a listen. They're really good, aren't they? It's so, so good. Esme, another fabulous week. Well done. 
And somebody else who work I always love to see come through is Georgiana's I mean again self-explanatory look at how gorgeously neat all her submissions are everything's in order and she's worked so hard on the maths um, and the instructions for the writing Georgiana really big well done and thank you so much for your fabulous submissions and again she's marked all of her work and she's highlighted where she needed help so I could go and say yeah well done or have a go at doing it like this so thank you Georgiana really big well done okay are you as awestruck as I was when I first saw Anna's colouring in I, how beautiful are these creations um I love the rainbow aesthetic that you've chosen and all the shading from light to dark um by the way colouring in is such a lovely way to relax I was so pleased to see that you've been doing that Anna highly recommend it for everybody and you can even go I mean you can keep it simple or you can do it so intricately like Anna's doing I love this one. So you've got the dark tones around the outside and the lighter ones in the middle. So creative. And look at all the different greens she's used and the different reds. Stunning. Absolutely beautiful. And I just have to show off all her submissions as well. Every subject, Anna completes this to a high standard, like lots of you. Please keep it up. I'm so proud to be your teacher, Anna. And can I just say, I'm so proud to be all of you guys as teachers because, or teacher, there's only one of me, isn't there? Um, because again, I'm so pleased to be Six Jets, um, Miss Jones, um, because of how hard you're all working and just the way that you've all put so much care and so much effort into it. It's maybe it's such good mood whenever I see your work come through and I always smile and I show it to my sister and she's like, oh, that looks so good. It was definitely year six, isn't it? And our housemate, he was saying, what are they, are they actually 10 and 11? And they're like, yeah. They are. Um, so you're really impressing everybody with your work. And this goes for everyone. So such a big well done. Um, and I love the shout out with kindness cup as well. Thanks, Anna. Um, but again, look at how neat everything is. It's all set out. Keep it up with the colour coding. That goes for everybody. Love a good colour code, as you all know. And Anna's been reading this book. So time for book number three. Now, I know Ava's also read this book as well. Um, and it's a part of a series. It's called The Case of the Missing Treasure by Robin Stevens. I'll read you some um, like very brief synopsis. So a daring thief has been robbing London's most famous museums. When Daisy's birthday treasure hunt leads them into the path of the culprit, Daisy and Hazel realise where they'll strike next, the British Museum. With the help of their friends, and rivals, the junior, Pinkert the junior Pinkertons. The girls must crack codes, unravel clues, and race against time to solve the mystery. This is part of a series. Can I just say how beautiful are all of the different code books? Love that. Um, and a whole series. I think the next in the series is the last one. Um, but this one's so good, and I would have loved these books when I was your age. It's got to do with mystery. It's a bit of adventure. Um, and it takes them all to different places. I love that. I love a series as well. So staying, um, staying in touch with the same characters. This looks so good. So again, when you send in your books, I can actually see them and I love reviewing them and like looking up and seeing what other people have said. Thank you so much for sending that in, Anna. Now, moving on now to Olivia's work. So, wow. That collage is so cool. What software did you use, by the way, Olivia? Because it looks really professional. And the cat's really cute as well. Um, it's so good. I have to say, I'm really impressed with the way that she up-leveled her time capsule. Because she went back. I gave her a couple of notes said, OK, cool. Can you now put labels on your time capsule? Olivia went back and she did that. Well done. That's what I talk. That's what I talk about when I say a blabbering. It's bringing your work up to that next level, and really up leveling it and making it the best possible that you can do. Olivia gave you loads of dojos for that. Um, and the last thing I want to say about Olivia's work is: can we just point out this this way that she's created her notes? So cool! I'm definitely stealing that um, way to sort of plan out your instructional writing um, when we go back to class. It's so good, the way that she's sort of separated everything out. It's all clear. She's got the... Because obviously they do a word of the day, don't they, in writing. She's got all the key words there. She's used decoration. This is what we talk about, revision notes, because you're going to be using lots of that when you go to secondary school. Um, stunning work this week, Olivia. Um, well done. 
And the last submission for this week is from Noah. This is his instructional piece. So funny. And by the way, can I just say, I love the last line. Keep the instructions with you just in case. Now, if I bump into an outlandish creature, Noah, I'm definitely going to need to use your instructions. Um, it's a good way. Trap them. Um, I wonder what kind of outlandish creatures we're talking about. Maybe like a phoenix. Oh, gosh, I wouldn't want to bump into one of those. Um, okay, so that's it from this week. Big well done. And I'm so excited to see some of you when we get back to class very, very, very soon. Thank you for your submissions. As always, they put such a big smile on my face. I love seeing them. I love hearing your voices as I'm reading through your work. Um, and keep messaging me on the LGFL uh, if you've got any questions or you just want a bit, a bit of a chat saying, oh, I made a cake today. Fabulous. I'm like, yay, you've made a cake. And I can actually hear your voices and it's so nice. Um, so yes, big well done. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and I can't wait to see your submissions. Next week is half term. Let's smash the last week. Let's get the best possible work out of the final week of summer one. Take care and I'll see you all very, very, very soon.